Oh, I see people coming in. Hello. Hello, Cynthia, Olivia, Viana, Mason, though I don't know. You've got an initial before your first name, so I don't really know if which which one is your which one is your true first name. We got Meg, Roddy, Ashley, Connor. Hello, everyone. You can hear me, and you can see me, and you can see my spacey background. This is our cell membranes lesson. You can see those little. There they are. There they are. Guess what those are? Pretty, pretty you can probably guess what those represent. Uh, we got little phospholipid aliens. Um, open up the chat and say hi. There's a little setting in Zoom where you pick whether you're going to send a message to hosts and panelists or you're going to send it to everyone. So please select everyone um, and say hi. Hello, hello. I am. I do want to make sure people can hear me. I want to make sure I get, I get some audio. I want to make sure it's coming through because I don't see anyone. Hey, other panelists, are you seeing any other chats? Do we just have a shy group? Chat is disabled. Is what I'm hearing. Uh, in fact, people are telling us in Q and A the chat is disabled. Well, we want to fix that. I will fix it. I'm on it. All right, we are fixing the chat so people can say hi. Those of you who are sending us Q&A messages telling us that the chat is disabled, thank you for helping us resolve that. Um, thank you for helping us resolve that. And yeah, um, I'm getting some messages even from panelists that we don't have the option to chat to everyone. So I think we got to fix that. But uh, I guess just say out loud in your own room, even though I can't hear you, hello. I'm really glad to be here with this awesome panel of med students to have this really cool conversation about the experiences they've had. I hope we laugh, we cry, we learn things. It's gonna be lovely. Cry, tears of joy. That's what we're looking for. Uh, we're gonna get into this med student panel. Um, I'm gonna start off today with just some introductions and a bit of an overview. This is a event from Sketchy, uh, but we are doing this in partnership with Blueprint. Uh, we're gonna talk to you about our special guest from Blueprint, another uh, med and MCAT and um, other test uh, company out there uh, it makes really good stuff. And then we're going to dive into the panel, a few different categories. And really, this whole thing is going to be open to Q&A. Um, and uh, so if you already know you have questions, especially as we start to introduce everyone, please throw them in the chat, throw them in Q&A. Yay! I see people saying hi. We made it happen. Thank you, Brittany. Brittany's name is Sketchy Marketing today. She's got the little sketchy logo uh, as her as her face, uh, and she just fixed that for us. So thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, before I even get into uh, introductions, I want to just talk a little bit about what Sketchy is. In fact, this will be what I'd love to see from everyone. Give me a number one in the chat if you know what Sketchy is. You feel like you know what we are, what we do. Give me a two if Sketchy is like new to you. You're like, I don't know what this thing is. I'm kind of learning about it. I've never seen it before. I love to see the one with exclamation points. Oh, I love to, uh, the, a lot of our events, we got good diversity and familiarity. So what we do at Sketchy is we teach you a lot. We try to teach you a lot of the same things you learn from a lot of different places. You know, like when you're prepping for med school, you're prepping for the MCAT, you got to learn the same kind of science, same kind of skills, but we do everything we can to teach you these things in the way your brain wants to learn them. We use visual memory, stories, uh, storytelling, drama, characters, original art to teach you all the things you need to know for med school, for MCAT, whatever it is we teach. It's used by hundreds of thousands of students. It is a fixture of the med school experience. Uh, and a lot of people say, why would I wanna use Sketchy? Well, if you think this whale and a spaceship is cool, Sketchy could be right for you. Basically, just give it a try if you wonder. We got free trials everywhere. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but we are going to give you our promo code if you're interested in buying Sketchy. And uh, that, that's going to be at the end. And we're going to give away one free Sketchy and Blueprint bundle. So please stick around till the end. We're going to get away live. Yeah, absolutely. We also uh, have 
Recently, we released the MCAT program about a year ago in essentially an early access form, but we've moved from med school into MCAT as well. We have over 290 lessons, every one of which covers a high yield uh, piece of MCAT science, uh, but we also have some MCAT strategy, research design, um, statistics, that kind of stuff. Uh, our orgo lessons and our physics lessons are particularly uh, beloved and, and called out really you know, tough subjects. Uh, and we even are going to look into cars soon. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on it. Uh, and people actually say it makes MCAT prep fun. Not more fun, but fun. We phrased that survey question very carefully to make sure we were saying, does it make it fun? Not just like a little fun than average. And people say yes. We'd like to show, show a good time. Our partners today running this uh, in sponsorship, you may have registered, especially the people who said uh, number two instead of a number one, may have registered through Blueprint instead of Sketchy. Uh, Blueprint is a really great education and test prep company. They have awesome LSAT classes, awesome MCAT classes, and they also have products like Cram Fighter and Med School Tutors uh, that help uh, students uh, all over in lots of different programs. Uh, they've got awesome tools, study planning, and really great MCAT class offerings and bundles with Sketchy. We know students need content review, students need full length tests, and so Sketchy and Blueprint have teamed up together to make a sketchy and full length bundle, uh, which again, we're gonna give away one of those. But enough of that, I'm gonna get into the panel and talk about us. My name is Adam, I'm the head of education programs at Sketchy. I joined Sketchy about two years ago as Sketchy's first MCAT employee. And so we built the team and we built all the stuff and now it is the program that you see today. Uh, and I've just been working in MCAT and other test prep and teaching for the longest time. Uh, and I love it. I'm the one who loves tests so everyone else can hate them and move on with their lives. That's sometimes what I say. Uh, speaking of people who love tests so other people can hate them, I also want to hand things over to Camden, who is our special guest from Blueprint today and also a member of our med student panel. Camden, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and also every panelist I need to know from you, are you team taco or team pizza? That is our question for the day. Well, that's a tough question. I'll get to that in a second. First of all, thanks, thanks for having me uh, to join on this panel. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Camden McDowell. Uh, I'm a current M3, so I'm in the third year in my clerkships at Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, and I'm also part of the MD-PhD program there uh, with a, a, a PhD in neuroscience from Princeton University. And um, I'm kind of coming here today from the Blueprint side of uh, this collaboration. I work with Blueprint Prep. I've been with them for um, a couple of years now, uh, and I love working with students. I love, you know, teaching people, you know, we are all going through this together uh, from, you know, MCAT, step one and beyond. Uh, and so I'm excited to be here and chat about the whole uh, medical school experience and the MCAT experience. Lovely. Thank you, Camden. And Team Taco or Team Pizza? Ah, the most important question. Yeah, I, I'm Team Pizza. You can do a lot with pizza. All right. I think you can do a lot with tacos, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll dig into that later, potentially. This is the rest of our panel as well. Uh, and we're going to go left to right here. Start with uh, Victoria. Uh, Victoria, tell us a little about yourself and Team Taco or Team Pizza. Hi, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you all today. So I'm Victoria. I am a current PGY2 dermatology resident at the Harvard Combined Program in Boston, and I went to med school at the University of Pittsburgh. And as far as for your question, you know, I grew up in Florida, so I'm going to have to say tacos. I, I have a soft spot for a Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and I believe that is your your social handle there at Dr. Curly Derm. Uh, if oh, yes. Follow you. Yeah. Yes. If you want to find me, reach out, ask questions, follow me. Feel free. I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Dr. Curly Derm. Awesome. Uh, then uh, next, Marcus, uh, I will tell you, I was starstruck when I got to meet Marcus because we recently uh, featured him as one of our uh, student spotlights on our blog. Uh, so I was like, oh my gosh, he's real. I saw the interview with him and everything. Marcus, tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Marcus Hendricks. I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. I'm a third year medical student at the American University of Antigua College of Medicine located in the Caribbean in Antigua. And I am for both tacos and pizza. You won't choose. All right. Uh, like and and uh, Tyler, uh, last but uh, certainly not least, um, uh, please tell us a bit about yourself. 
Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Tyler. Um, I am a fourth year at the University of Oklahoma and I'm looking to apply into pediatrics. So I'm a fourth year medical student about, about to be a resident. I think you said you're in the town of Edo, Oklahoma. Did you say that when we when we met? We I earlier? am from a small city called Edo, Oklahoma, but I currently live in Oklahoma City. Is that like where the name Edo Annie from the musical Oklahoma comes from? That's my question. No, but it's named after a different person named Ada. Also, ah. I'm pizza. I forgot that detail. All right. Well, that means we are in an exact tie between Team Tacos and Team Pizza here. Uh, that question will not be resolved in today's panel. However, it does seem in the chat that pizza does win. So perhaps that tips it. We're just going to get right into Q&A. So um, what we have today is we have four big categories. We have the MCAT. We have med school applications. We have extracurriculars. And we have med school life. And I'm going to go through each of those categories where we have a few questions that have been seeded from earlier events and that were sent to us beforehand. And we're going to go through the panel and get their thoughts. But what we're actually going to prioritize is any questions that come in through the chat live today. So please put them in the Q&A function in Zoom or just throw them right in the chat. And we'll also get to those. But I want to get to our first category, which is... Um, MCAT prep. So I'm actually just going to put all these little bullets up here um, so that we can talk about this holistically. You know, uh, MCAT prep is obviously a big deal. It's a, you know, an application to med school, very um, competitive. And MCAT is uh, one of, if not the largest uh, single consideration involved. And everyone here on this panel has been through it and had their own experiences. So, um, uh, just whatever you would like to share about your uh, experience and uh, best advice about the MCAT, what resources you used, how you use them, how it's different from finals, um, how to use practice tests and advice you would give to essentially the next generation. Um, I am going to just uh, pick in kind of a random order. I'm going to start with Victoria. Why don't you start us off and talk to us about what your MCAT experience was like? I love how you picked the person who probably took the MCAT the longest time ago, <laughs> but I, I would say that, you know, thinking to my experience, taking the MCAT and then how I kind of evolved as a med student and evolved my study tactics as I prepared for, yes, the MCAT is your first big test that you'll take going into med school. But once you get there, there's going to be other exams that you're going to have to take as well. And I think that a huge one is not only just doing practice test, but making sure that you do full length practice tests so that you can practice your timing. And I, that, that's essential. Now as a resident, you know, we still have to take board exams too. And it, the key is making sure that you have time management skills. You know how to attack a question very methodically when you're going through the question and not waste any time and knowing exactly how much time you have per question and whether or not you need to skip and move on, or if you can kind of sit there and linger if you have time left over. But I guess all that in summary, making sure that you have time management skills when it comes to the full length test. Yeah, not to discount the actual like in 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 seat experience. I see a lot of uh, heads nodding. I'll use this actually as an opportunity to punt things over to um, Camden uh, because uh, perhaps you have uh, talked about test taking skills with your tutoring students a lot. Um, what a specific you know, tactics and mindsets do you uh, try to instill? Yeah, that's, a, I think the the key question when you're starting like at the very start, when you're starting to prepare for one of these exams, like this big MCAT that's, you know, maybe weeks or months in the future is uh, figuring out how you're going to actually approach all of this material. And there's two things that I like to always tell students. The very first one is be very discerning in the resources you choose, because there's more resources than you could possibly ever get through in a million years. And you need to just, you know, choose one or two, try them out a little bit, sample them, and then run with it a little bit. Once you find a resource that works for you, go for it. So that's a big thing that I find uh, prevents resource fatigue. Uh, and then the other thing, particularly as you start to prepare for your study, so like let's say you're thinking about taking the MCAT in the spring, and right now here we're in the fall, is to learn over the next year, learn how you learn. That's a term I like to use a lot, to spend time trying out different learning techniques, visual, auditory, you know, things that combine them, like sketchy, uh, you know, um, uh, tools uh, like YouTube videos, podcasts, try all of those things, see what works for you and then capitalize on those strengths. So learn how you learn. 
Uh, that's awesome. And one of the things I really emphasize in like, you know, one, whenever I teach classes or I'm working with students is uh, really about that metacognition, observing your own thinking, whether you're taking a test or you're studying or like you realize what sorts of subjects bother you and how they make you feel and like how you should react and cope to that. That kind of self-awareness is absolutely important. And I, and I totally agree. Um, I actually uh, I'll put things over to uh, Tyler because Tyler, I think you've assisted us with some uh, with some with some articles in the past. Am I correct about that? Yes, I'm. A yeah, I feel like you've written on this computer. subject. So yeah, what 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 do you, what do you think about learning styles and and how that works into MCAT prep or really any part of your experience? Oh, yeah, my my very first uh, blog post was about how to use Sketchy to increase your retention. So it's really important, you know, in undergrad, you take a test and you take the test and then you walk out of the test and you promptly forget everything that you ever learned in the last month. And that's okay in undergrad because things don't really build on each other that much, like maybe for a final over a semester, but really for the most part, um, it's a little different where when you start to kind of this medical journey, it's the first time that you have to learn something and then remember it for six months, a year or something like that. So um, in that blog, I just talk about kind of how, why Sketchy is so great and then other tools that you can kind of add on to Sketchy so that you remember things for a really long time. Um, I actually really want to answer this last question is what would I have done differently? Please learn from my mistakes. So when I took the MCAT, there were three official, like, you know, the testing center sites or tests, three official tests. And I thought I needed to save them. And so I took my very first practice exam three weeks before I took the MCAT and I bombed it. And that was super stressful. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. Now there's more. So you don't have to worry as quite as much about like saving the test and making sure you'll have it for future studying. But absolutely take a practice test at the very beginning of your MCAT studying. And this is so important because it wasn't until three weeks before I took the test when I actually realized how they were going to ask me questions and kind of the level and how to work through a question. Um, and that'll come with studying, but you kind of need to know what you're signing up for and what you're studying for so that you can study for it in a, a way that'll make you successful. So that's what I tell every single pre-med student. Take a practice test at the very beginning. You are going to bomb it, and that is totally fine. Um, but now you know that the way they ask questions is you have to know a bit of background scientific knowledge, and then you have to put that in a graph, and then you have to turn it upside down, and then what's the answer? And that's kind of what the MCAT feels like when you're asked a question. So you'll know what to expect. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, the knowledge you have, like the content knowledge you have and, and all that is it's kind of like building a toolbox, but you don't actually know what project you're going to have to apply those tools to until you get really familiar with the exam itself. Uh, and to your point about uh, retention, Tyler, I would just, um, just emphasize that. I think it's a really great point that you really articulated the difference between why it's different to cram versus really study and retain because you get to these exams like the MCAT and the challenges you run into in med school that are just so huge that cramming is just literally impossible, regardless of the strategy, you just can't, which means you have to have this multi-week, multi-month study plan and the things you started studying months ago, you've got to be able to keep them in your brain by the time you actually test. So you got to find out what that means for you. Uh, Marcus, I want to move uh, on to you and get your input about your MCAT experience before we move to our next subject of med school applications. How have things been like for you, Marcus? All right, that's a good question. So I am a bit of a non-traditional medical school student. Um, I took the MCAT first back in 2012. Goodness. Ooh, that, means <laughs> uh, you, that, 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 that means you were on the two-digit scoring scale back in the day. Yes, please. Um, so the things that worked well for me were I did a uh, um, test prep program. Um, I won't reveal which one I did, but that was very helpful. I did it for about six months. And then after that six months, I did my own um, self preparation program where I use um, two other companies books and really did a lot of um, practice exams and did a lot of questions, 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 questions. I looked at lots of passages and I also read a lot of scientific magazines like Discover Magazine. Um, 
because I wanted to get used to reading those long passages and like really picking out what the main idea was and like get used to reading those passages to answer those questions. Um, let's see, how did I incorporate them? So I was working part-time while I was studying for the MCAT. And then I was also applying for full-time jobs and also applying for research opportunities. That's also when I started volunteering with the fire department as an EMT and training. So I was doing a lot at the time that I was studying for the MCAT, which I would not recommend doing. Um, I would have done things differently by just full-time studying for the MCAT. If that is possible for you, I would recommend doing it. If you need to work like to sustain yourself, then it is possible, but I would stretch out your study time to, just to give yourself some cushion. If you find that you're not meeting your milestones for where you want to be on your um, practice test, having that like long plan would work for you, especially if you're working part-time yeah. or even full-time. And there's there's a re there's a numbers driven way uh, that that to, to do that. And you're making a great point, Marcus. You know, like if you can do it full time, you can afford to do it a little shorter. If you can't do it full time, you really got to get more time. And it's been pretty consistent over many years that students study between 250 to 300 hours uh, for the MCAT on average. So you want to look at your whole study schedule ahead of you and make sure that whatever weekly schedule you make for yourself, it adds up to about 300 hours. Obviously, that's a lot of different tasks. You need to have big long stretches to take full lengths and also to review full lengths. And there'll be little bits here and there where you focus on reading or you focus on practice, or you focus on timing. But you want to, you know, you want to say, well, if it's going to be three months, I better find a way to do 100 hours a month. If it's going to be six months, then you can afford to stretch it out a little more. Uh, and might you be able to get by in a little less than 300 hours? You might, but you don't want to risk being wrong in the other direction. And so you got to make those plans. And I'm really glad you said that, Marcus. Um, there is a uh, there's a question in the chat uh, that, that came out in Q&A. And I think some of you asking questions in Q&A, uh, there have been actually quite a few. I think you're probably seeing some of them being answered uh, over chat by the panelists. Thank you, panelists, for diving in to do that. So if you're wondering why we didn't answer your question live, make sure you check the chat box because uh, there are going to be some typed out answers. Um, but the one I can talk to, um, someone who graduated, uh, but what's the best approach for someone that graduated two years ago and took the MCAT but didn't do well? It's been a year or so since you've studied any material. What are the best tips? And would it be too soon to try to take the test like in January or March. I wonder if anyone here wants to field that uh, question out loud, because I think it's a really great one. Someone who hasn't done studying in a while and needs to ramp up for the MCAT. Yeah, I, I didn't respond to that just because it was a little, it would be like kind of a long answer. Um, I would say it's going to be a little bit harder because your classes aren't as fresh in your mind. So you can't like remember it probably from the biochem that you took like three or four years ago. But I would suggest kind of taking a look at what resources you're using and changing that up and also taking a look at your learning style and making sure that you're using resources that will make you most successful with your learning style. Because I personally used like physical books to study for the MCAT and now that I'm in med school, I was like, I cannot believe I did that. That's probably the worst thing I could have done. Um, so kind of try to like look around and figure out how you best retain information and try to use resources that use that. Uh, and I don't one, think it would be too soon. If, if you took it, then if you really studied the next couple of months, I don't think it would be too soon. Yeah, we, we really are. I mean, January is still a few months away. Time is meaningless since a few years ago, uh, but it is still a few months till we get to January and a little further to March. It really depends on how much time you can set aside. Um, and um, one of the other filters that I put on uh, that, Tyler, is um, if you haven't studied in a long time, you're not currently a pre-med, maybe you're non-traditional, what have you, make sure you use at least some of your resources that are dedicated MCAT prep resources that are built with the roadmap to the test in mind. Like you really don't want to just use your old notes from your classes if you haven't studied in a while because it's going to be way too easy to fall into a trap of not studying something that ends up being really high yield so make sure you use some program or some set of textbooks or something that really hits like everything on the amc rather than just getting uh, little pieces here and there 
I want to move to our next subject, but uh, I'll I'll give a pause to uh, anyone here on the panel who wants to answer a little more about MCAT study or has any other tips. All right, I'm going to move on to applications. Applications are a lot more fun than MCAT prep, I've always found. Uh, we talk about applications. Everyone wants to talk about them, share what they're doing. It's really energizing. When you talk about test prep, they're like, oh, yeah, I have to do that. So let's energize this uh, this conversation. A um, lot we can talk about applications, uh, but anybody who has made it through the process and successfully, like our panelists have, is going to have some good advice. Again, I'll just bounce around to uh, different members of the panel. Um, Marcus, I know I finished the last one with you, but I'll start this one with you, um, especially because I think you can speak to kind of the different med schools and you mentioned you had a non-traditional journey. Uh, what would you have, what are some of your question, answers to these questions about med school applications and what would you like to share? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so one of the things that I really wanted to share was that I applied or I started my application to a bunch of US medical schools and then the school that I'm currently going to, the American University College of Medicine um, here in Antigua, gave me the first offer and I was ready to start. Whereas if I wanted to start medical school at a US medical school, I would have had to have waited until like next year because like the secondary applications hadn't even opened up yet. And I just wanted to start. Um, so AUA gave me an offer. I was like, I'm there. <laughs> um, but it really depends on what really works best for your situation. Um, so let's see, what are the programs? What are programs looking for an applicant? They really wanna see if you would be a good person overall, if you really do care about helping people. And there are so many different ways to help people. Before I became a medical school student, I worked as an engineer. I've made a lot of parts um, for a machine shop company. I did some research for the Food and Drug Administration. So I helped people in those roles. I also served as a police officer and a volunteer firefighter slash paramedic. So I was like trying to explore myself, really figure out what I wanted to do to help people. And um, while I was studying to be a paramedic in paramedic school, you know, my instructors were like, you should really give medical school uh, a go. And so I did. And here I am. Let's see, how do I ask for a letter of recommendation? I would ask for letters of recommendation from your favorite professors, whoever you felt like you gelled with the most. So for me, that was my genetics professor at the University of Maryland. I don't know if I'm allowed, I'll just throw this go out there. University of Maryland College Park. Um, my genetics professor also worked for the Food and Drug Administration and he and I got along very well. I loved his class. I was an active participant in his class at the front row um, and really developed a good rapport with him. And he was happy to write me a letter of recommendation. I also reached out to my cell bio professor and he wrote me a really strong, positive letter of recommendation. Um, I was very active, went to, to him during his professor office hours a bunch of times. And um, yeah, so that's how I figured out who I would ask for letters of recommendation. As far as interview tips, just be yourself. Schools really wanna know if you are like a human being versus a robot or somebody who like enjoys cutting people for the fun of it, <laughs> or if you, you wanna be a surgeon to help people. So they're really just trying to figure out, are you a good human being? So be yourself. Um, let's see, traditional versus non-traditional student journeys. I'm definitely non-traditional. So I graduated from college in 2011. I did a bunch of work as an engineer, police officer, firefighter, um, paramedic, and did some shadowing stuff, um, volunteered in a mobile health clinic in Haiti. I did a bunch of really different things in a lot of different places. Um, so if you are a couple years out from school and you're trying to figure out how best to apply for medical school, I can speak to you more on that in the chat. Um, well, and as far as Caribbean versus U.S. medical schools, I really want to say that Go U.S. medical schools all the way. Like, let your Caribbean medical schools be your very last resort. I'm going to say it. You know, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to study medicine that I have been given here. And I'll even say that on record. I know this is going to be recorded um, and be put on YouTube, but let it be your last resort. Um, and I can say a lot more in the chat box because I want to give the other panelists some time to answer some questions. Uh, thanks a lot, Marcus. Uh, I think that's gonna, probably going to, I'm going to guess it's going to be a theme of find a way to, you know, make sure to show your humanity and your true self. Uh, but uh, I want to kick it over to Victoria for the next one. Um, you know, of these items and, and med school applications in general, what was the experience like for you and what advice do you have? 
Sure. So I am also a team non-traditional student. So I took three years off between undergrad and starting medical school. And I actually didn't take my MCAT until after I graduated from college. I took it a couple months afterwards. So, you know, I think with non-traditional, it doesn't mean that you're less than somebody who went straight through. It just means that you're unique and you have a unique journey. And that's so important to really highlight in your application. So I guess kind of going on to how to really craft your application, make sure you know your brand, make sure you know who you are, and don't be afraid to highlight that. We've all done so many things in college, in high school, so many phenomenal things. And the thing with pre-med is a lot of times, a lot of us have done very similar things. Uh, you know, a lot of us have been in, in the same organizations. A lot of us have done a lot of the same volunteer work and taken a lot of the same courses. But the thing about applying to med school is what makes you unique. And don't be afraid to show that off. So for me, I'm a retired pageant girl, and I talked about it a lot in my application. And you know what? I'm sure schools probably remembered that because it was different and it was unique. And it's something that I'm passionate about outside of medicine. And it's something that I was able to talk about with passion. So whatever you do, whether it's a hobby or whatever it is, just don't be afraid to weave that into your brand and weave that into your journey when you're crafting your application. And then as far as interview tips, so I think nowadays with uh, interviews mostly going virtual, it's really important to make sure that you understand your technology. It's one thing to have the answers for the questions and, you know, you can go online and you can look up, you know, what are the most common behavioral questions that you're going to get asked? What are the most common med school questions that you're going to get asked? And I, I prepared a lot for my interviews uh, in a very similar way that I prepared for my pageant interviews. And a lot of people don't know that with pageants, your interview is one of the largest proportions of your score. So practice, practice, practice. Um, make sure that you have go-to like default scenarios that you can fall back onto that you can weave into any sort of question that you may get asked, whether it's about teamwork, working with others, a time you didn't get along with somebody. There's a very common behavioral questions that you may get asked, but also with the virtual interview, you have to take your technology into consideration, um, know how you're going to sound good on mic, whether that be using a headset um, like Camden has, whether that means using your computer audio, knowing your webcam, whether or not you feel like it's, it's grainy, it's pixelated, is it clear? Take all that into consideration and make sure that you practice with trusted friends, mentors, families beforehand, because you don't want to get on screen for the first time and have that be your interview. So those are just a few things that I'll say about, about interview and lighting. Lighting is so important, making sure my lighting's a little uh, right now because it's nighttime, but I think that yes, ring lights, <laughs> ring lights are so key. Um, setting up like a multi-point light system, if you're able to, so that you have it coming from the front, if you're in front of a window and coming from the side, so that it really illuminates your face and it allows you to show off, you know, yourself because you're trying to convince this med school that you are the perfect candidate for them. And there's no better way than really being able to one, feel comfortable, but to make sure that they can actually see you when you're talking. So those are just a few, a few interview tips that I'll give in this new virtual era of interviews. Yeah. I've, I've got a, I've got a sun lamp just out of frame here. Uh, that's how I, that's how I keep, keep, keep well illuminated in my Brooklyn closet. Yep. See, there, there you go. Uh, so, um, very good point. And I think a lot of it is about finding just your level of comfort. You may not get the exact questions that you prepared for in your interview, but you will have an entire matrix, an entire idea of ways you're going to respond to whatever questions you have because you've gotten that level of confidence. And it's a really good point. Um, so Camden, why don't you talk to us about uh, headsets during the med school applications as Victoria called out for you and, and anything else that you think is a good advice, of course. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm actually using the least op optimal setup right now. I don't have a front light. I don't have a microphone on my head headset, but uh, it does the trick for, for today. Um, so I'll go through the kind of the list in order here, because I think it's, this is a good order. You know, what are programs looking for, for an applicant? And I want to echo, um, I think what both Marcus and Victoria said is, you know, they want you to be you and they want people that are going to be uh, good doctors um, and they want people who care. I think, uh, you know, uh, 
a lot of people, they don't, they, they, it's, it's hard sometimes to show that you care on a paper application. And so um, anything as you're going through, whether or not it's through your extracurriculars or through its your personal statement or your response to interview questions, uh, you, and part of being a doctor is to have empathy, to want to help improve other people's life. I mean, that's why we all take the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, and you want to kind of showcase that as much as you're able to during this entire process. Um, and I think, as I'll get to in a second, one of the best ways to do that is through your actions and through your story of who you are. And so be you uh, and, and uh, you know, show that, you know, you care for other people. Um, the letter of recommendation, this is something I feel, I feel really strongly about. I sit on our admissions uh, medical school, or I sat on our mission, uh, medical school admissions committee for multiple years. And a good letter of recommendation goes a really long way. And one of the keys to the good letter of recommendation is as you read it, you'll be able to tell, does this professor, does this you know, advisor know that person? And so you know, don't just go asking for letters of recommendation from the head of the department or someone who you think their name carries with it some weight. Look for people that know you, as Marcus said, people that can speak to different facets of who you are. And a nice way to do that is to you know, choose someone who saw you in class in which you were really engaged, you know, then see someone, you know, have someone else write a letter who saw you in your extracurriculars and can speak to that with specific examples. And collectively, that's going to then support what you talk about in your application and help build that story about who you are. Um, for interview tips, uh, one of the biggest things on Zoom is your energy needs to be like time times two. You don't need to be like, you know, shouting into the camera or anything, but particularly over virtual uh, interactions, you need to really bring some energy to the table when you answer these questions, uh, because we all have a little bit of Zoom fatigue at this point. Uh, but on top of that, uh, you want to, you know, prepare responses and practice them, but you don't want to sound rote. You know, you don't want to just like kind of go through your, your, your checklist of each interview question. You actually want to have some flexibility. So what I'm trying to say is prepare, but don't over, over prepare because then you sound a little bit like a robot sometimes. And so have fun with the interviews. Engage with the person that you're talking with. We're all human and we're here to chat. Uh, and um, I guess I can speak to, I'm a, the, the kind of classic traditional student in the sense that I came from undergrad directly into med school. Um, I'm not traditional in the sense that I have no background in anything medical and anyone in my family ever. Uh, and so what I want to speak to as far as the kind of that pathway is uh, for a lot of people, taking time off between college and med school, I think is really powerful. Speaking a bit to what Victoria was saying, it makes you be able to kind of showcase who you are and develop your personality a little bit more. And I, I think I actually encourage a lot of people to take some time off. It's something that, you know, if my wife and I had not been, uh, you know, navigating to our next steps together at the time of application, I probably would have taken some time off. And it's a good opportunity to see who you are before you pursue medicine. Uh, and the most important thing I'm not thinking about yet, I think I touched on a lot of it, but I think the most important thing is to think about what your whole story is and use the interview, the letters of rec, and the written application to bring that together. And I think I'll, uh, I talked enough there, so I'll pass it on. <laughs> All right, uh, Tyler. Uh, you, what? How about how about your thoughts on med school applications? Uh, and I'll actually just give a couple little programming notes. Uh, number one, we always get start getting questions around this time of, oh, how long is this event? We're looking to go till about the hour, so we've got about twenty minutes left here. Uh, also, um, I do really want to get to the med school life portion. I don't want to have to cut that off. So um, I'm gonna we're, we're gonna do a little bit of a briefer line on extracurriculars. So panelists. Um, uh, think just I'll say who wants to talk about extracurriculars I think Camden in particular you said you wanted to say some things so I'll make that briefly so we can get to med school life uh, but Tyler talk to us about applications yeah absolutely so everything I just want to like very quickly what people said they want to make sure you're a normal human being that is the most important thing for your interview is that you can talk to people and patients won't hate talking to you that's what they want to know Two, anything that makes you unique or special they absolutely love if you are not a biology major they will jump all over that they love it because that means that you had to work double as hard to like not take the classes for the mcat and you had to pass the mcat that's really hard anything that makes you non-traditional they also love it means that you can go through life and you can figure it out and you can come out the other side stronger so they just absolutely love that stuff i'm a totally traditional student nothing super interesting about me. Um, and I got into med school, so it's okay. <laughs> um, have 
what Victoria said, have a theme and run with it the, through your whole application. I want you to have something that makes you super unique that you can kind of use and be like, well, through this, I learned that. And through this, I learned that. And like mine was, I really want to be a doctor for kids with special needs. So that's what I talked about. Cause that's what I can talk about really passionately forever. And so I think that passion is really, they saw that and we're like, come on in. Um, yeah. Oh, interview tips, Zoom interview tips, super important. Definitely look up and practice out loud questions, common questions. Um, some things I've heard that are kind of sneaky, like I don't think a lot of people know this yet, is you can use like silent fidgets for when you're on Zoom, especially if you're really anxious and use them like under your table. It's a way to kind of get some of that energy out without like being like, you know, fidgeting like on the screen. Um, also, don't use swivel chairs. I've heard that from a lot of like, I'm about to apply to residency. So like, if you're really nervous, you're going to be like this the whole time. And like, don't do that. Just sit in like a, a chair with four legs. So those are all my tips. Love the swivel chair point. Yeah. And I, I'm sure we got a good number of people here who are undergrads, bio majors, pre-meds. I feel like maybe we're making, making y'all feel bad for being, you know, on the traditional track or whatever. Really, it's just about finding whatever is unique. It's not about like, like making up anything that's unique. You are unique. It might not be your major. It might be something else. And just make sure that that comes out. And uh, I'm really glad we all emphasize that because it's the most important piece in general. Uh, so I, like I said, I want to go to extracurriculars, uh, but get on to med school life. Um, Camden in particular, though, you said you really want to talk about extracurriculars. So I'm going to give you the mic for a bit before we move to the next section. Definitely. I think it was you said you really want to talk about it, right? I remember yeah. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. got a soft spot for extracurriculars because they're, they're so much fun. Um, but I think what I wanted to say is that particularly as you are, you know, with your other pre-med friends, if, uh, you know, as you go through college, everyone's going to want to be doing everything all the time and have 10 different extracurriculars. I think Marcus mentioned it in the chat, like 10 different extracurriculars, and they all are going to try to be president of 10 of them. That uh, one of the most important thing with your extracurriculars is to not treat it like a checkbox. Find that one thing. For me, it was research. I loved research and I spent all of my time doing research and I did no community service. I had friends, my roommate, he loved community service. He did all community service. He hated research. He didn't do any research. We did not check off all those boxes. And I actually think that can make you a stronger applicant. If you just, you know, find something that hits your fancy and go for it. And so that's actually really all I wanted to say. Now that said, you know, you're interested in medicine. It's probably a good idea to shadow some doctors before you apply to med school. So, you know, there's still, still are some things you should make that's sure. Not just for your application. Yeah. Yeah. That's not for application. That's just for getting an idea of uh, what it's like. Um, that's all I wanted to say on that. I'm writing a sketchy blog on how to shadow as a pre-med and all of the tips and it'll be coming out in, I think, October. So yeah. I'll look at that. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of you probably seen this in the chat so far. We've linked out to a few different blog posts, some written by Tyler, some uh, otherwise we, we, we just published like this, you know, typeset, like, like roadmap to 520 type thing. Uh, check out our blog in general, follow those links. Uh, we publish, you know, just a lot of, a lot of free content um, for you to follow and, and learn and understand. Um, I, I got one more thing I want to say about applications, which just, uh, you know, in talking about like, well, what, we are thinking about what kind of model do we have to meet, you know, for extracurriculars and what have you. And we've talked about the fact that you shouldn't worry about fitting some kind of mold, but also do not fall for the temptation to like exaggerate or lie or stretch the truth or move your dates around or say you did something a little cooler or different in whatever shadowing you did. Um, really? I mean, the biggest reason why is because remember, you are sending this to people who evaluate thousands of these. They know how to tell when somebody is stretching it a bit. <laughs> uh, and it's just not worth it. Tell your story. You are valuable. You do not need to uh, turn it into something that it's not. Um, so uh, yeah, I want to get to med school. I want to make sure every one of us gets to answer this because uh, I feel like that's probably one of the big reasons why people are here at this event. And we can kind of close off with it. Uh, what is it like? basically. And how do you get through it? Uh, Tyler, uh, I'll get, get, go to you first for this one. You know, what's it like? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a fourth year um, and that looks a little different. Your third and fourth year looks a lot different. So I'm going to talk more about first year because I think that's what you're probably more interested in. Um, I, so the crazy thing about med school is you don't have to go to class and it's weird and it feels, it feels wrong. <laughs> you know, you're just like, 
oh no, what the heck? And so I fought it for a long time, but going, not going to class is ruthlessly efficient. That's how someone explained it to me. And I very much agree, ruthlessly efficient. And so I am also not a morning person. So I would wake up at like 7 30, 8 a.m. Um, I would actually watch all the sketches for whatever my class was going over that day so that I had some kind of baseline knowledge. And then I would um, watch the lectures or not really depended um, and use like Anki cards and kind of a flashcard system that I use to learn things um, in the morning. So you're kind of learning new information in the morning and then in the afternoon you have like kind of different classes like a humanities class or a statistics class or um, different labs or things that you have to do. And so that's kind of what my day looked like. Um, I definitely studied a lot of the day. Um, but something someone said to me when I was a pre-med that changed my life is that I did get great sleep. Like that is something that's important to me and it happened. Like I, I get a, at least seven hours of sleep every night and that's totally doable as long as I like time manage correctly and I don't like procrastinate. So I like to say that so you can kind of breathe easy. <laughs> uh the, s s sketchy uh making going to lecture unnecessary since 2013 that should actually be our new slogan uh <laughs> uh marcus i'll throw it over to, to you next uh where where you are in the med school experiences what what what's it like what are you doing day to day how do you manage it yeah so i'm currently in my third year and just like she said i'm gonna um pretty much give you what worked for me in my first two years, which were your basic clinical sciences for the most part. Um, so yeah, I watched sketchy videos as well before lecture. If I went to lecture, you'll find out that not all lecturers are created equal, God bless them. Um, and you'll also find out that it really is awesome to get like a two hour lecture condensed into like a 10 minute sketchy video and you get all the pertinent information that you need. Like Vero, uh, is morphology is uh, different. Uh, you like sketchy, especially for it, um, it farm been, and it microbiology. Been just me, but I think you might have broken up. Did, did, did Marcus break up for anyone else? Marcus, could you repeat what 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 you said last maybe ten seconds or so? Oh, maybe he's breaking up again. Too sketchy a lot before I went to class. I was like my preview um, for that material before I went into lecture. Does uh, that make Marcus, sense? Marcus, you broke up for us a little bit. Um, we didn't hear your uh, full answer, unfortunately. I don't know if there's a if there's a, a slight moving around location change or maybe a stabilization uh, that that would help out. Um, because really want to hear what you have to say. I uh, don't, don't want to miss the chance. Um, oh, no problem. I'll, I'll text it. <laughs> all right. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for getting that in there. And um, we'll, we'll come, come back to you for final thoughts as well, Marcus. Uh, sorry we lost you for a bit there. Uh, Victoria, I want to throw over to you. Um, love to hear about med school experience, but really you can tell us a little bit about the residency experience. Res you are a resident resident. Uh, here in this event. Uh, so maybe you can expand our horizons too. That's funny, the resident resident. But yeah, so I agree with kind of what everyone said about med school life. It's about finding your balance and um, what brings you joy. Studying is great. You're going to have to study a lot, but we're not meant to study 24-7 you have to make time for the things that make you whole as a person, um, whatever that may be, making sure that you have enough time to get seven hours of sleep, making sure you have enough time to work out, making sure you have enough time to like visit with your family and friends and somehow finding a way to integrate studying into the time that you have. So for example, I'm a gym girl, love going to the gym even as an intern or when I was on my surgery rotation, I would go to the gym or go on a run before I would go to work. So if it was at 3.30 in the morning, then that's what I had to do. But if I had to study, I know everyone's like, oh my gosh, but it, that's like my happiness for the day is going to the gym. It keeps me awake and I'm, so, I'm like in my zone when I get to work. But if I was studying, I would kind of multitask when I'm at the gym. So if I'm like on a run, 
or on the bike or something, I would listen. So using my like audio skills for learning, I would listen um, to something to help solidify information. So say I'd watched a sketchy video before and yes, like it, once you've seen it once you have the images and everything, but you can always listen to it to refresh in your head. Like, yes, this means this. Yes, this means that. So whenever I was, you know, like working out, sometimes I would listen, use the audio skills. And then if I was ever traveling somewhere um, or flying like pre pandemic times when I was in med school flying somewhere, I would always try to make sure that I studied on the airplane so that when I got to wherever I was going, I felt a little bit more okay, not studying as much. So just make the most of whatever time you have and just be creative in the ways that you're studying in a way that works for you. And now as a resident, you know, it's, it's a little different. I, I do have to show up. I cannot sit at home all day. I have to go to work every day. So I do go to work and then it's, you know, like trying to manage studying on top of that. And sometimes the days are really long, but I think that the time management skills that you pick up as a med student will really carry you through. And, and once you realize one, how you learn two what makes you whole as a person, it's a lot easier to continue those habits moving forward into your career as a resident and then eventually as an attending. Uh, and when we were chatting before the session, uh, Victoria, there's one thing that you said. I, I had said in kind of a way I assumed it was like taken for granted because I've heard people say this about being a resident. I was like, well, God, and then for residency, you just have no free time whatsoever. It's just an absolute nightmare. And you said, oh, no, for residency, it's easier. I think you said because you like what you do. I, I basically want to prompt you with that because I thought it was a really good answer. And I wanted to let you share that with the group and how you think oh, about it. <laughs> sure. So what I said, so, you know, in med school, you're going to have to take your required clerkships. Everyone has to do surgery. Everyone has to do medicine. Everyone has to do peds. There's a, cert, a set clerkship schedule that everyone has to take. Sometimes it may be in a different order, but at the end of the day, everyone does the same thing. And I think that with med school, yes, I love the fact that it introduces you to everything. So you have the opportunity to see what you love, what you don't like, what you're like, it's okay. I could do this, but then eventually you find your tribe and you find what's for you. You find your passion. And what I said for when I was talking to Adam before with residency, it's like you're doing what you love every day. It's not like you're like, eh, I'm not really into this, but I still have to show up to work, which third year is going to be different than, you know, your pre clerkship years, because you can't just it's not necessarily about learning from the material, the study material. Now you have to find a way to manage working as well as studying too. So it's really making the most of your time management and like being efficient skills. So, you know, making sure that you're doing your notes on time so that you do have, you know, time to go to the gym, time to go out to eat with your friends and family, and really just like making a plan that works for you and sticking with it. And I think that with sketchy, I used it for micro. That was like my micro. That's, that's what I did. And when you come up with a plan that works for you early on, then you're able to carry that through to later. Uh, thanks. I, like I said, I thought that was just so insightful because I feel like most of the time what I hear is just like the, the trauma bonding of, oh my God, residency. Oh, that was awful. But like, to your point, you've chosen this, you know, you want to choose something that can, that can, that can energize you, even if, you know, it's very intense. And I, I thought it was really insightful. Absolutely. Choose a specialty that you're going to be excited to get up and go to work and do every day. Choose a specialty where you get to see cases and, and do things that, that excite you, that you're passionate about. And then it, then it won't really feel like a drag. Uh, all right, so uh, Camden, uh, you are our uh, your 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 fourth in line here for our fourth subject. Uh, take us home. What insights would you share about med school life and how how you manage it yourself, and and then what what ideas you share? Yeah, so I just want to start off saying med school is super fun. It's awesome. It's really fun. It's like it's it's a lot of work, but it is the preclinical years. So you know years one and two, at a lot of institutions, you're drinking from a fire hose. There's information coming at you left and right. Like we were saying earlier, figure out the way you learn early on and it's going to make that a lot easier. And me personally, I treated it like a job. I refused to let myself work past 6 p.m. most days, you know, before a test, you'd go and go much later. But like in general, I'd go to, I would not go to school. I'd sit at home and listen to lectures on two times speed, as I think a, a lot of us uh, uh, are accustomed to doing now. And, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, study. And then when you're done, you're done. 
Don't guilt yourself into what your friends are doing or what your peers are doing. It doesn't matter. Figure something that works for you and study with that. Uh, and then clerkship, which is, I'm right in the middle of clerkship right now, year three, internal medicine. It is hectic. You know, I'm at the hospital all day and then coming here and doing, uh, you know, great events like this. And it's really fun. Uh, and I think what my recommendation as far as like work-life balance is third year in particular, this, there's not a lot of it. I'm going to be honest. Uh, but that's okay because this is what you signed up to do. So often, oftentimes, like when I wasn't motivated, I remind myself, this is what we signed up for. Like you want to be a doctor. You want to help people. You want to work with people and talk with people and study. And so I would just encourage you to find that phrase of motivation that you can tell yourself when things get, you know, a little bit darker. And that will happen occasionally when you're stressed out or there's a big exam coming up and just tell it to yourself or write it down on a note, keep it in your wallet. And that's what I do. You know, this is what you signed up to do and you did it because you're excited to do it. So med school is really fun. That's what I want to summarize with. Uh, but then finally, with all of this stuff, as we talked about, is when you are struggling, reach out early and reach out often. That's what I tell all of my students, all of my like friends who are starting med school, reach out early, reach out often to people that you trust who can, you know, help you figure out the best study tools. A lot of schools have like people that will help you do that or tutors or resources like sketchy, sketchy. And so reach out early, reach out often and have fun with it. And uh, th thank you so much, Camden. And uh, I really do hope everyone is also kind of du dual screening here and checking out the chat because there's just been great things everyone has been sharing about, um, you know, what motivates them and, and how they think about things. And, um, you know, I, I do just uh, want to want to give, uh, I, got, I got a couple more notes and don't worry, still going to give away uh, a course before we leave. Um, but uh, I, I did want to, um, uh, I did want to just say, you know, thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. Uh, I really hope uh, uh, those of you who are attending here, you know, this has been this has been motivating. This has kind of shown you, you know, what's ahead. You've learned a couple things uh, because that's, you know, why we run this. We want to, we want to help plug people into the community, you know, just realize there are other people doing the same thing. You're not running this by yourself. Uh, and so I'm just re really happy for that. Uh, I want to uh, talk a little business here. And by business, I mean, uh, giving some stuff away. So here we go. We are going to give away a sketchy and blueprint bundle. We have a bundle where you get sketchy MCAT for six months and also some blueprint full length exams. It's a nice package and it could be all you need for MCAT prep, depending on what you need. But a lot of, you know, it's it's certainly two big elements of even if you're making a larger program, you get it in one and the study planning is built in. There's a study planning tool built in uh, and all of the sketchy assignments are there in the study planning tool. We stay aligned to make sure it's all up to date. So it's really cool. And we're going to give it away, uh, you know, uh, several hundred dollar value. And this is how you enter. Put in the chat your name and your goal MCAT score. If you don't know what the MCAT scoring scale is, just put any number in there. It's okay. Uh, but put that in there. I'm going to count down from 10. And then I'm going to select at random a winner. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. I have a system. I need to click. I need to do this. And all right. Amy Shu, H S U. I'm not sure if that's Sue or Shu or it's pronounced differently. I don't know if I pronounce it, but Amy, you are our lucky winner. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody, for entering. Uh, if your name is not Amy, um, then you should check us out anyway. Uh, and right now, we have our big back-to-school sale going during the month of August. This is one of the largest sales we run every year. Um, you know, back to school, like the number two, you know, so we play on that a bit. This is a code that if you want to get sketchy or you want to get the sketchy and blueprint bundles, which like I said, if you're putting together an MCAT prep package, um, you should, that's a really good option. Use this code, you get 20% off. We'd love to have you. We put a lot of work into what we do and we really hope it helps out. As uh, was mentioned a couple of times today, you got to choose the right resources and the ones that work for you. And, you know, uh, we, 
think we've made something that works for a whole lot of folks and hopefully it'll work for you as well. So thank you so much. Uh, I want to just give one final, get, get, let everyone give a sign off here uh, to each of our panelists. Um, I'll call out individually. Uh, hey, Camden, uh, what, what are some final thoughts you want to share? Work hard, have fun. Lovely. Marcus, final thoughts? Stay encouraged. You can be a doctor. You will be a doctor. Keep at it. Keep at it. Be positive. All right, Tyler. Um, I just want to end by saying that medical school is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. Um, and I, even though it's a grind, I love it. I really do love it every day. And I like what I'm learning, even when I'm learning something that isn't what I want to go into. That's awesome. Uh, and hey, you know, follow our blog, blog.sketchy.com, and you will see articles from Tyler if you thought Tyler was giving good advice. Uh, and Victoria, final thoughts. So I just wanted to say that, I, you know, I think I put it in the post, I mean, sorry, not in the post, in the chat, but, you know, it's really about running your own race in med school, and you're only going to slow yourself down if you take the time to look at, you know, those running in the lanes next to you. So just do what works for you and don't feel like just because a classmate is doing one thing that you have to do it too. And, you know, med school is, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's rewarding work. The days will be really long. Some of them will be longer than others, but they'll be really long. But I promise the years fly by before you even know it. Like, I still can't believe I'm a resident now. I feel like I just started med school and that was back in 2017, which is so crazy. <laughs> but, you know, it, it'll be tough, but it'll be worth it. Yeah, run your own race. Don't worry about people in their lanes. I love it. It's so true, like in track practice or swimming, but also real life. It's just a very, that's a very robust metaphor. Uh, thank you for that, Victoria. Uh, and yeah, uh, my final thoughts are really, I would just plus one everything that we heard today. Um, you know, uh, be yourself, uh, work hard, um, and, you know, follow, follow your dreams, all that jazz, uh, and keep an eye out for similar events. Uh, you know, if you signed up, you probably hear announcements of ones that we do in the future, uh, follow us on socials, uh, and so on. But that's it for this event. Uh, we are here at 8.02 p.m. on the East Coast, 5.02 p.m. on the West Coast. Thank you so much to all of our panelists and our attendees. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>